creating a czar that's going to control all of intelligent agencies? Well, <laughs> it puts a lot of power in one person's hand. Yeah, it does. Uh, but you know, uh, back uh, years ago when Ronnie Reagan was president, uh, the FBI uh, set up an operation uh, whereby if the uh, field agents ran into a large-scale drug operation, right. before they were to continue their investigation, they were to check with this uh, coordinator in FBI headquarters, Washington, D.C., and in some instances, I know that uh, they were told to back off. Now, I figure that was probably a CIA drug operation, to be honest with you, or, or you know, what have you. Yeah. But uh, that's the way they controlled it back in the Reagan administration. And then also Ronnie Reagan, instead of um, giving assignments to the personnel within the intelligence community, like uh, CIA agents, FBI, and so forth, they started operating, they started uh, hiring outside operators so there'd be no paper trails, so there'd be no uh, way to trace them. And uh, and then, of course, they didn't put anything on paper and what they told them to do, they could they pass that on orally. And they could cover it up just like the, you know, the, uh, they do with financing and what have you. By uh, just not, me just say this, this person was hired to do something and he did something else. And that's, that's in the files, but nobody's going to find out what their assignment was. No, I mean, and, why is it that everything that seems to uh, work with this government, why is everything so secret, so buried, that even with, um, you know, taking Freedom of Information Act, they just look at it and laugh at you? That means nothing. No, Freedom of Information is nothing. Uh, you know, in this case that I mentioned with the LAPD, yeah. um, I also uh, happen to know, about that same time I received a threatening letter and I went to the postal inspectors who brought in the FBI and they said it was a, a terrorist type letter, et cetera, et cetera. And the one was mailed from uh, New Hampshire. Right. And as a result, I happen to know that the FBI called the LAPD and talked to them in connection with the trap that had been placed on my line. And I know that the FBI has that information. So in addition to subpoenaing the LAPD uh, records, and for those who did not hear the show last night, I filed a complaint with Internal Affairs when I was told they didn't uh, follow through and set up a trap. And, uh, and then later on, I subpoenaed those files, and I even had the file number of the Internal Affairs investigation. Hmm. And I subpoenaed those files, and they came back and said, there's no record of me in any of the LAPD files. No record at all. But anyway, at the same time, I happened to know that the FBI and the hmm. post inspectors uh, were informed of these phone calls and of the trap. Yeah. And they had the results of the trap and the phone calls. Uh, through the LAPD, because they were the ones that did it. And so I, I filed a subpoena with the FBI, and uh, you know what they did? They made it, uh, they referred it over the Freedom of Information Act. It's, oh, jeez, really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, on a case, that i got to go through FOIA on a case, which yeah. could take 18 months, two years. I mean, they're playing their little games. Yes, they are. And it, it's it's a shame, because why is it? Here we have, I still feel we have the greatest country in the world and why is it that today and it didn't start you know until a few years ago a few decades because I I remember when it started Ted and that is at any time people hear something that it came from the government or from something like that immediately immediately you cancel it out and we don't believe it so automatically now we do not believe anything the government says and that's too bad that's a shame that we have Well, to... unfortunately, there's a lot of people that do believe what the government says. Well... <laughs> those of us who are in the know that have done our homework and done our research, we know. Yeah. We know what's going on behind the scenes, and even out in the open. But, I mean, look at the uh, the, the terrorism report that we mentioned on yesterday's show. Yeah. I spent three weeks in Washington, D.C., handed out to over 150, 155 congressmen and senators, including the committee investigating 911. And in this terrorism report, as I mentioned yesterday, yep. uh, Mike Reconosuto, and we have, we're very well documented with the certified mail, uh, photocopies of certified mail receipts, mm -hmm. and in this, Michael told the FBI about a forthcoming terrorist attack, who the, the leader of the uh, uh, the group was that uh, coordinated in the United States, the, the number one honcho, and uh, of course, uh, other details about uh, the false passports, and that there right. were six planes, not four, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And I passed that out to Congressman Senator Lee Hamilton, the co-chairman, and nothing ever came of it. Nobody ever, I mean, 
you know, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, Alex, is that in addition to giving it to congressmen and senators, I also contacted the New York Times, huh. the Washington Post, yep. and the L.A. Times. I and call them the three sisters, by the way. Right. And I contacted the three sisters, yep. and not a word was printed. And then I said, well, I'll go to the Associated Press, because the uh, Associated Press reporter in St. In St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota, right. Patrick Howe, I think was his name, uh, he had done some articles on this uh, young lady, uh, Colleen Riley. Uh, isn't that her name, Riley? No. I don't go, know. Colette. The one, the FBI agent who wrote the memo and so forth, and I can't think of her full name right now. But anyway, he'd done some articles on her, mm -hmm. and of course that's all died down. She was uh, transferred to some way, some menial task. And so I figured if he would write those articles, he would certainly write this. And I gave him about ten days, and it didn't come out in the Associated Press line, and I called him, mm -hmm. and I said, why aren't you going to print it? He said, it's too big. I can't print it. It's too big. It's too big. The story is too yeah. big. Isn't that ridiculous? Yes, yeah. So, so it, it shows you that mainstream press, mainstream politicians, uh, they they don't want something that's going to rock the boat. They want to keep smoothing, you know, uh, everything down. They want the waters to be nice so that they don't have to work, and and then they become part of the gang, and they get their payouts. That's right. They are part of the gang. Oh man, Ted. I mean, it's just it's it's frustrating. We've got to somehow figure out uh, by tomorrow night exactly what all of us can do to, number one, expose all the things we're talking about and then figure out a way to stop it and get, get humanity back on track because the, the evilness that we're talking about defies anything that anybody could make up. Yeah, we might ask John DeCamp, who's going to be on the show, I guess, in a few minutes, yeah. uh, what his yeah. thought, thoughts are on doing another show tomorrow night and what we could do to kind of wrap this up. These uh, three series that uh, you've done, Alex, are outstanding uh, to have... Um, Noreen Gosh, uh, and then uh, Jim Rothstein, and now Johnny Camp. Yeah, uh, that's heavy, very heavy, and uh, these are all credible, uh, intelligent, smart people who've been there, done that, and uh, so maybe we can ask, talk to John tonight on the air about uh, what he thinks about tomorrow. He might have somebody there in Nebraska could help. There's uh, some other people, by the way. There's uh, an individual in New York who's writing a book on this. He might be interested. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, okay. we'll do that off the air because I don't. Yeah. Want, he may not want me to divulge his name. <laughs> okay. And uh, then we mentioned that other individual, the photographer, yep. but uh, yep. he has not uh, responded. So, well, we'll see. I mean, because uh, uh, without mentioning his name, and I wait. Uh, he was an integral part in this entire episode of, of human history, working directly with Larry King. And, right. and he was the guy, he was the photographer that went around and took uh, the pictures, not not of the snuff films. Now that, as, as we said yesterday, and, you know, this is something that obviously the mainstream press just, you know, runs away from, but Hunter Thompson, who was a character in his own right, uh, who we mentioned last night with Jim Rothstein, that uh, the press and, and the police say, oh, well, Hunter Thompson committed suicide. He didn't commit suicide. I mean, my gosh, he and he was the one, according to Paul Benassi, um, who took the one film that, that John DeCamp talks about in his book. And when asked who was the photographer, this is in, I guess, uh, in the congressional hearings, wasn't it? And, and Benassi said his name was Hunter Thompson. He was a producer of some snuff films. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he was listed as coming out of Las Vegas, but... He died recently in Denver, and Aspen, did you say Aspen? Somewhere? Aspen, Colorado, he is, yeah, yeah. And he is, I, I've been told, I, I haven't seen the documentation, I've been told that he was in the process of exposing all this, right. and a change of heart, and was writing his own book. Yeah, and then that's, he was on the phone with his wife. Yeah, he was on the phone with his wife when the knock on the door, and then she heard the gunshots. Yep, that's right. So And then he committed suicide. Yeah. He went to the door, he committed suicide. That's right. How many bullet holes did he have in his head? Yeah. Five or six. Yeah, probably. Well, he, he just wanted to make sure he did it right, you know. Yeah. Did he have two bullet holes in his head? Um, you know, that's what I remember, but uh, I don't recall the exact thing, Ted. I just don't well, know. Gary Webb, we know, had two bullet holes. Yeah, well, that's... Gary Webb was the reporter who uh, right. exposed the CIA drug operation in South Central L.A. Yeah. And he was fired. San Jose 